and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Church buildings, structures that can hold many people, were built because of a need. That need began as a place where many can congregate at one time to worship the Lord God. The church, the assembly of born-again believers, began meeting together in people's homes, just a few at a time, but as the Lord drew more to Himself, it became necessary to build a structure that could house the many, for they could not all fit in one person's house. This is a simple reason that churches were first built. They were not intended to be majestic edifices. A simple structure where many could congregate was sufficient. Mankind decided to make them more than what they needed to be. Monstrous structures, ornate in appearance, stained glass windows, golden chalices, comfortable pews all in a row, sometimes three or four wide. I do not know where the steeples first appeared, nor do I know the name of the person who decided that a cross needed to be placed in that building somewhere. Soon the hymnal arrived, a collection of works meant to glorify the Most High in song. Men appointed to lead the service, led by God, called by God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, driven, consumed by that desire to preach Christ and Him crucified. Of course, soon the proper receptacle was necessary, something to pass down the rows of the pews to collect the offerings of the assembly. The songs are sung, the prayers are offered, God is worshipped. Diversions arrived, as they always do, and the congregation splits, unable to agree on the Word of God and how it should be interpreted. And so another structure must be built, sometimes far away, sometimes right across the street. Of course, those who are well-versed in deception, whose father is Satan, have their own buildings. The Romanists, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, the list is nearly endless. Some are barely recognizable as to their design, Others are ostentatious, showing the great wealth available to that particular religious organization. To those that began in earnest to worship the Lord, soon the routines became the obligation. Fear of the Lord no longer follows function. The message begins to sway from the love of Christ, from the wrath of God upon unrighteousness, from the power of the Holy Spirit to prompt men to honor and lift up the name of the Almighty in reverential fear to the cares and woes of the world. Soon the world enters into the building right through the front door. Manicured lawns, swept sidewalks, ornate interiors, the monitors go up, the troubles of mankind are shown on the screen, and those in attendance begin to lose hope, for iniquity is abounding and their love begins to grow cold. The CDC makes a mandate, and the church that is meant to open their doors wide in times of trouble and doubt and days of uncertainty and fear locks those doors. When they are reopened, few return, and those that do are required by men who are supposed to live a life in accordance to Philippians 1.21, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, who should hold fast to the truth of Psalm 91.10, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Ask those few in attendance to wear a face covering to keep a respectful distance from each other, to not offer the hand of fellowship anymore. Fear sits where once the power of God reigned. Many who stand behind the pulpit today do not lead in the strength and power of the Most High, but by examples of doubt, of fear, of what they believe the people in the pews will agree with, with what the world wants them to say. They do not preach the message of the Gospels. They do not preach the power of Christ, the judgment of the Almighty upon the nations, the wrath of God that is approaching. I will not speak here of those places that carry the name Church, that allow for same-sex marriages, or of those that believe baptism is necessary for salvation, those places that repeat the same words each Sunday, repetition with no thought of true, holy, humble worship of the Most High. They are plentiful enough and will receive their just reward and it will not be what they expected. When all the statistics are gathered and adjusted properly, in the 1930s, church attendance was approximately 70% of the population where the name of Jesus Christ was known. Today, by all accounts, it is less than 20%. But our Father in Heaven always reserves a remnant for Himself, and where the church began is where it is returning to. Those whose sole desire in life is to lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to proclaim him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings are again meeting in small groups and the houses and homes of those who love, serve, and honor him. It is a sad day that we live in when pastors, preachers, and ministers, most of whom spent large sums of money to achieve a frame certificate, are more concerned with how to bring people into the church instead of leading them to a fuller knowledge of the grace and mercy of the Most High. Iniquity will abound, and the love of many will grow cold, but not in all.